Hello, you're listening to Mike Madden on the Art Show podcast. Here you'll find interviews with authors, musicians, artists, and anyone else in and around the arts. Some of the interviews are taken direct from the Art Show on Expat Radio, one or two specials in between. This show features drummer Frosty Beadle of the band Life Signs. Frosty talks about the band, their albums, and their latest single, Impossible. Hello, this is Mike Madden on the Art Show on Expat Radio, and tonight my special guest is from the band Life Signs. This guy is the drummer, so welcome to the show, Frosty Beadle. Hi, hello. Hello, and Life Signs uh, have a new single out called Impossible, uh, released on the 6th of March. Uh, You've got quite an unusual, uh, for for a a relatively modern band, you've got quite, quite an unusual sound, because... Everything these days seems to be quite a bit manufactured, and you hark back to the days of the sort of the, the symphonic bands, uh, which is, is progressive rock, which can be sort of seen as a bit old school, and a bit of a, a gamble as a sort of a musical career move. So, would you put it in the progressive rock genre, or, or is it something else? Well, that's a, that's a, that's a tough one. I mean, for me, um, I think some people put us in the prog rock thing. Some people say we're classic rock. Um, some people have actually called the single impossible pop um i think we play rock music i think some of the songs are a bit more progressive in nature uh because they're a bit longer than your normal three and a half minute pop song but um i think as you've kind of hinted at that there's always a strong melody and and we hope something for everyone to latch on to i think some people have kind of compared what we do to some of the songs sound a bit like Genesis or used to be or when Peter Gabriel was making music, if I may be so daring to suggest that. <laughs> <That's good as laughs> uh, Why but, not? Um, Why not? Well, we're, we're kind of a kind of a, um, a, a mature bunch of people who have professional musicians. We've been around and um, we really enjoy making music together. And um, I think melody is, is definitely a strong part of the content. And I think when people kind of label as the progressive thing i think the danger there for me is is that people might just think we're a band that just plays 13 minutes of of just round and round uh flashy chops you know uh, lots of flashy licks and looking impressive where basically the music is very much uh based around melody and and there's a lot of thought goes goes into that it's it's interesting you say that and and you know i i sort of said it's a, a bit of a gamble but actually you've you've become really popular because i know this this latest album uh which is called cardington yes uh, released in 2017 was crowdfunded and you managed to get to your target in 48 hours so that <laughs> must have exceeded your expectations uh, just a little bit yeah <laughs> i mean I, I, it's um i think that there are people out there who still like to hear uh melody and songs i mean i think you've only got to look at how popular um 80s uh music is and i mean i i i was in an 80s band i was in a band called cutting crew um and we had a song called i just died in your arms which was a number one hit in i think it was 12 countries which and it was there were great times and people still harken back because i think today there is less melody uh in popular music i mean that's just my opinion and uh, i mean i think the days of when i was a kid um i used to go to the record shop and i used to i used to buy a single and there'd be somebody my age behind me buying the same single i mean the music business has changed and evolved in a way which um i don't particularly like because uh, modern pop music is now seen to be kind of aimed at a certain a certain generation uh, rather than it be um available or acceptable to all and i think what we do or we try and do in life signs is we try and just make melodies and music and we like to attract everybody to our shows um young and old um so in a way it's like doffing your cap back to those times when music was popular music to me anyway yeah i I make you absolutely right on that and and you know i talk quite fondly about my childhood growing up in the 70s i mean we had susie quattro on the show and uh yeah, I've still got two of her singles from back in the early 70s, mid 70s. And it's that kind of thing that's also been lost with, you know, you, you now go to Spotify, download it and, and hey, ho, I've got Life Signs latest single. But yeah. there's something magical about holding that single in your hand or holding that LP in your hand, particularly. 
Um, oh, hard copies, albums. I mean, I mean the artwork. I mean, I used to uh, go. I had a record shop at the top of my street, which is uh, not everybody had that. I'm sure uh, your listeners, but you know, you walk to the top of the street and you'd see this friendly face, and you'd, you'd even be able to listen to little snippets of an album. He'd put, you know, you say, "You'll never listen to this. Go into booth number three, and we'll play this for you." Um, I am going back a few years now, <laughs> and there was just something magical about that. And then you get the album home, and you'd be able to sit down, listen to it, and you'd be able, and, and some double albums or just kind of the the gatefold. You'd be able yeah, to open this album. And there'd be beautiful artwork, there'd be lyrics in there, and it was part of the listening experience to be able to to look at this and listen to this because the two were kind of married together. Um, and um, that kind of disappeared with CDs because you just get this little thing, which is a little square thing. You've got to pull it out. Yeah, if, you, if your eyesight's not very good, you've got to wear specs to read everything and everything's in small print. The magic was lost, really, uh, when when the C- CD came out. Yes, I think in terms of sonic quality, you've got less chance of scratching your vinyl, obviously. Uh, and the <laughs> yeah. CDs, CDs can actually play in in uh, quite a state. But yeah, that magic was lost, I think. And um, I think um, that's maybe one of the reasons why vinyl is is making a comeback. I mean, people tell me it's making a comeback. We we certainly sell quite a few copies of vinyl. It's a lot warmer sounding uh, if you're one of these purists who had a has a hi-fi system. Um, as a kid, my dad had a he played the hi-fi. That was it. That was that was the reason I got into music. And uh, um, vinyl just has this kind of warmth when you put it on and listen to it. That that doesn't quite uh, translate to to a CD for me anyway. Yeah, and it's a brave move by the industry to actually welcome back vinyl because it's not yeah. it's not so easy to just oh I'll just play this vinyl. I mean, obviously with a download you can play it anywhere. With a CD yeah. you've got lots of CD players, but with vinyl you've got to go out and buy a record player with yes. needles and all that kind of thing. It's yeah. uh, a real step back, but a, but a step forward at the same time. It is, and it's, it's oh, excuse me, it is. <laughs> I'll say that a bit higher. It is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> except um it, it's quite unusual to see how the younger generation react to that as well i mean that's that's something that i i think is is great because you get young people some young people taking an interest in vinyl and saying well what's this then what does this do um and this is kind of in a world where i've i've got uh, uh, friends whose kids uh, will say to their fathers uh, oh what did you go and buy that cd for uh, you could have just downloaded it or spotified it um you know alarmingly there is a younger generation of people out there who think that music should be free and and that's 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 a kind of a a, a slightly worrying trend because if music becomes completely free globally then obviously there's there's no real kind of um for for people to go and make music it costs music and costs time and and the passion and love that goes into making a record if there's no reward for that, then then that would be a very dark day indeed. So let's let's hope it doesn't come to that. Yeah, in, indeed. Um, well, we're going to go to a break now. So uh, I think we can uh, probably dip into your album now and play one of the tracks. So this one is, and you know, for any listeners out there, go go and get the album. This is not one of the thirteen minute tracks. This is Chasing Rainbows. Still, they cut me down to size. I look around the room But no one dares to meet me with their eyes I don't understand this game I watch the monkeys jump While others seem to turn and fan flames I can't handle all these lies Something that is positive That I can hide behind I don't need to know your name Just tell me I'm in luck And put me in the Put me in the fridge I was only chasing rainbows
is gone and it's long before the long before the fall I feel winter's discontent You count the money but it's very seldom oh so seldom spent I can handle all these lies You're listening to Expat Radio. You're listening to Expat Radio, beaming out across France and around the world. Hello, this is Mike Madden on the Art Show on Expat Radio, and uh, I'm delighted to welcome back to the show Frosty Beadle from Life Signs. Hello. Hello, and um, before the break, we were talking about how music's changed and, and, you know, people thinking music should be free. One thing that does still reassure me is that bands like yourself, when you released your first album, you went on a tour of, of around 50 shows to, to yeah. get yourself out there, which is a, a fantastic uh, thing to do. Uh, I noticed this, uh, this single, you've got a, a tour in March. Just eight dates at the moment. Is that going to be expanded? Uh, well, at the moment, uh, no. Um, but basically, the the reason why we're doing these dates is um, the thing is the band uh, as it exists. Uh, we're all kind of professional musicians. We all have day jobs, uh, and we come together whenever we can. And we are going on a cruise, and we have a festival coming up as well. And so we're basically putting these dates around a time frame when we're all together. We can all do some work together. Um, so at the moment, unfortunately, there are only the eight dates, uh, but also playing at a festival called the Fusion Festival. And then at the end of March, we'll be going on a cruise called Cruise to the Edge, which, uh, as the name would suggest, if you've got any people out there who, who remember the band, yes, they had an album called Close to the Edge. Now, they are the band that the main kind of headlining band of that cruise Right, uh, and we're going on that band, and there are other bands on there. Um, uh, some of your listeners may know Harken, Pendragon, uh, Gong. I mean, these are some of these are quite old bands, Curved Air, Merillion, um, and these are kind of progressive and also kind of rock bands. And um, we've played on this cruise uh, a few times now. This is our fourth cruise, um, and uh, we're looking forward to going there and getting a bit of sun. And it's a great event because um, there are so many bands on there playing and we get to see bands, we get to meet musicians, we get to meet the people, obviously, who are on the cruise. And so it's great fun. So basically, uh, we just wanted to get some dates around the cruise and also we wanted just to try and, and, and push ourselves and make people aware that we exist uh, in this in this world. And um, And I suppose you could say that impossible uh the single which uh i think you're going to play later um is just something about uh it, it's a song about it was inspired by a man's best friend and it's meant to be a positive and happy song and we just wanted to get it out there for people to listen to it's it's a it's a noble aim um <laughs> <laughs> now, now your uh, your your band is not just any old band. You've got some fantastic musicians in there. Uh, start with the keyboard player John Young, who picked up the best keyboard player in the Classic Rock Society Awards, uh, yeah. and he's yeah. played with uh, 
a, a massive variety of people from Asia, Paul Rogers, the Scorpions, yeah. and even Bonnie Tyler. He's um, still playing with Bonnie Tyler as is well. Is he? He's just been to to uh, Russia uh, in in minus seventeen degrees, something that he wasn't particularly happy to to go there. But then again, the gigs were a great success. He's been working with Bonnie for for quite some time. You've also got John Poole on the bass, uh, yes. who's a is kind of a musical guru, a, a multi instrumentalist. Yeah. He is, and he's worked with bands like the Wild Hearts and the Cardiacs, Cardiacs which is. Um, uh, the, the really interesting thing about Life Signs is if you put all the musicians on paper and, and what they do and what they've done, it is like this melting pot of different influences, which is what I think makes us uh, so special because, you know, we'll, we'll have a tune, we'll have a song. I mean, John is the main writer of the band. Um, it was his baby originally. And and then we all come together and we 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 all contribute to the production uh, and the sound of life signs, and that all comes from the various backgrounds that we come from. We just come together and we all kind of read off the same page. It's kind of quite amazing, really. We all get a result, which we're all happy with, uh, regardless of of where we've come from. Yeah, and Dave Bainbridge, your lead guitarist, uh, won yes. a, a Radio Two Award for piano but has also been named in the world's top 10 guitarists in prog rock magazine. Now that is some achievement. Well, he's an incredible musician is Dave. Um, I mean, he's, um, it's, it's kind of quite annoying really (laughs) because because he really is. I mean, not only is is he a a great guitar player, gets great sounds, but he can sit down and he can play anything on the piano on keyboards. So when we do touring, uh, we actually, he, he doubles on keys, on and guitar so uh, when he's not playing guitar you might just switch you know he might switch in the middle of a song have a guitar slung around his neck and then just start playing keys and then pick up the guitar <laughs> i mean he's he's just incredible and he's a lovely lovely man as well is dave in fact i mean they're all lovely people but dave is a very kind uh, very gentle and um, just a great musician great all-around musician uh, and then we come to a guy called Frosty Beadle uh, on oh, drums, who's yes. played with Boy George, Sinead O'Connor, Mitch uh, Gloria Gaynor. Um, and, you know, it's, it's another great musical catalogue. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was just very fortunate, I think, to have been in the music industry at a time when lots of things were happening. Um, I mean, after the cutting crew thing in the 80s, in the 90s, that's kind of when I spread my wings and went and did lots of different things, uh, lots of artists coming away, coming and touring. And I just got involved in many different situations. Um, did, did a tour with Boy George in 2008, uh, went to South America with him, all different kinds of things that have happened. Uh, and I I'm, I'm just feel very fortunate. I mean, for the last uh, 20 years, my, my bread and butter, my day job, if you like, has been working at Mamma Mia for the last 20 years in London. Um, right. And that's been great because it means I've been able to retain my professional status as a musician and, and still play every day. And the people there are so great. They just let me go out and do what I want. Uh, I just make, just make sure things are covered there and I can go out and do all these different things. Um, so that's 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 marvellous. And obviously that includes that includes life signs too. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know there are, there are a catalogue of some major stars there that your your band are all playing with or have played with, and there's also yeah. uh, Steve Rispin on the sound with with sort of Tina Turner, Elton John. They don't get much bigger these names. So if if you sort of were 15 years old today, who would be the bands that you would look towards today? Oh, that's a very difficult question. It really is. Uh, and it's a tricky one for me to answer if I'm if I'm totally honest because uh, if I was 15 years old today and looking at the music business, oh, gosh, how can I say this? Um, it it doesn't quite have the romance that it had for me when I was 15 years old uh, uh, as as uh, as an industry to to go out and, and do. It's it's become much harder the industry. I mean the way we promote music, the way we uh, perform music, the way music is sold and distributed 
is is very very different from those days um so the answer to your question i'm afraid i have to be honest is that i really don't know <laughs> it's a perfectly valid answer um and it's interesting you that you know we've talked a little bit about the change in the industry as well and your uh crowdfunding your next album uh, do you see that as a major way to go and and you know away from the the label approach and and, and do you, i think it probably gives you better musical control anyway oh it does i mean that's exactly it it gives you better musical control uh you're not at the behest of companies um and also i think it's great that you know the people who want you to make a record who are paying money uh, to you to make a record you know they want that music uh, and and immediately there is the kind of inspiration you need to to produce something and to produce something that's great for the sake of all these people who've pledged money for for an album so um they're 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 in kind of in one little bubble is everything you need inspiration wise and everything else in order to kind of get something back from making a record because obviously you know making music it's 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 not free uh we have overheads we you know and, and um you know we, we we want to be able to one day hopefully uh turn this into something where it could be a career but it's it's just it's just a really hard thing to do uh and um it's people like yourself and and obviously the publicity we get which will hopefully make the band more visible uh, to other people and we can maybe make this maybe snowball into something really great yeah, it's certainly something that uh, I think a lot of your fans would like to see because your original album, uh, also called Life Signs, was yeah. released in 2013 yeah. and did really well. Um, and then they had to wait four years for Cardington to appear and from yeah. then another three years for Impossible to come out. I think you probably know where I'm going here. That I do. Your, I mean, this, this your is fans the... must want more. Well, yeah, I, I, I get that. And, and so do we. We want more. Um, but, but as I've said, you know, uh, unfortunately, what we do uh, doesn't always pay the bills. And uh, much as we love being together and playing together, um, we have to go out and earn a living uh, um, to make ends meet. Uh, I mean, when you see, for example, Spotify and uh, uh, paying artists and writers not point not not one pence per stream. Yeah, I mean. That that is basically quite crippling when you think that to get the minimum wage, uh, the basic minimum wage for anybody to live on, how many thousands of streams do you have to have to make that happen? Yeah. And that's what you're fighting all the time uh, uh, with the industry. So we, we'd very much like to, to change all that. Um, and it only comes from the support of people, awareness of, of the band, uh, and then hopefully we can take it a step forward. And I I would love to be in a position where we you know the band could make an album every year or two years but um as long as we have to go there and pay our bills and go and work and do other things um then it's it's a slow process and it's as frustrating for us as it is for our fans and people who want to hear more music yeah um I, I'm, I'm sure it is but you you seem to have at least got some longevity i know you've all got yeah. your own things to do yeah uh, so how did you all get together originally well, originally, um, it was a phone call I got from John John Young, uh, who actually played at a session uh, with Cutting Crew some years ago. And he said, uh, you probably won't remember me, but my name's John Young. Um, uh, I'm just ringing you up to see if you fancy playing in this band I've got. And I just said, oh, yeah, of course, I do remember you, John. And we had a drink and... Uh, and he just explained to me what he wanted to do with Life Signs. And then we had a bass player called Nick Beggs at the time, who Nick Beggs played with Kagajuju, and he goes touring with people like Steve Hackett and uh, Stephen Wilson uh, today. And he was the original bass player, and, and Steve Rispin, the sound engineer. And that was kind of Life Signs and how it was born. Uh, some tunes were written, we got together, we, we had four or five different guitarists play on the first album. And that's how it came about. And then when we came to tour, um, sadly, uh, Nick couldn't commit to touring because he had to go and earn a living, obviously, doing his gigs with um, Steve Hackett and, and, and the likes of Stephen Wilson. So we had we then put a, a different band together and we had a guitarist at the time called Nico Sonev. And then we had uh, and John Paul Gembord, then the bass player who was from the Cardiacs. John's been with us the longest. And then uh, Nico had to leave us about three years ago to pursue his own projects and then uh, Dave Bainbridge came along and, and what a find he was I mean just amazing um, 
and that's kind of uh, the history of the band uh, to date really right so um we're sort of coming towards the end of our time here um so what have you got <clears throat> next for uh, for life signs well next of all is uh we already have the the third the next album um actually this this there's a live album as well so this is actually the fourth album it's it's underway we're starting to put things together and the the plan for the rest of the year is uh probably not to gig as much uh we'd like to do some more shows obviously whenever we can we like to do shows but the plan for the rest of the year is to spend all our time assembling another album um and that in itself can be quite difficult because like i said we're busy but we all kind of get together do bits and we all kind of fly bits in and we, we the production process can go on for six eight months maybe longer you know uh, the, yeah. the main thing the main thing about the music we make is we, we we don't let anything go we have very high standards the bar is always very high we don't just let anything slip through the net we make sure that we're totally happy with everything we do um from the production of the music to to the final mix and the mastering which comes after the mix everything has to be right before we actually all sit down and say okay we're going to sign this off now and um let's let's get it out there so um these things sometimes take time but it is a thing of love a thing of passion and um if we didn't do that it, we, we, we'd just be we'd be letting ourselves down selling ourselves short uh, and selling everybody out there who who loves the band short as well so that's why these things can take time I, i'm sure your fans will uh will, will welcome the news and also respect that that, that uh, they will be getting perfection when it gets delivered um and hopefully you've picked up some new f- fans from listening to our show today well that's great i hope so and it's been great talking to you Mark. Yeah, good. you've been a wonderful guest, and uh, I certainly hope you come back on later in the year when uh, when your next album is nearing completion. Hopefully, I will. I will hold you to that. <laughs> uh, it's been a wonderful half hour. Uh, we're now going to play out with the single that we've been talking about. This is Life Signs and Impossible.
was changing with the weather Still we shut our eyes, here comes the wall You've been listening to the Art Show podcast with Mike Madden. Come back soon for more artists, authors, musicians, and anyone else connected with the arts. We're going to play out with Mike Sanchez, and I don't stand a chance. Baby, you you hiding something that you don't want me to know? Because I'm getting a vibe from way down the side, like you're just about ready to go. If you can't tell me where you stayed last night, you just can't go. With a treating me right I'm on the road to heartbreak Now's the time to tell me so Because I'm getting a chill Like I'm gonna be ill I know you don't want me no more I won't be satisfied With your little white lies Girl, I've only just begun to realize I don't stand a chance I don't stand a chance You don't wanna know And I can't make you dance Well, I said goodbye Another guy. I wish you were mine, but I'm losing my mind. I don't stand a chance. Satisfied with your little white lies Girl, I've only just begun to realize I don't stand a chance No, I don't stand a chance You don't want to know and I can't make you dance Well, I'll say goodbye Find yourself another guy I wish you were mine, but I'm losing my mind I don't stand a chance